Lord and without a street. I'm gonna open up your gate. And maybe tell you about Phaedra and how she gave me life and how she made it in. Some other morning I was dreaming. Rockin' Larry Lockin here with the Pleiadian Light Grid Project. Hey, that song was called Some Velvet Morning by Lee Hazelwood and Nancy Citrus. Sinatra, excuse me, kind of the cowboy psychedelic song. Um, the reason I played it is because I'm going to talk a little bit about Art Bell. My thoughts and memories growing up, you know, listening to Art Bell and then on through my adult years. I um, That was one of Art Bell's um, famous bumper songs that he would play either at the beginning of his show, um, going in and out of commercial breaks, or at the top of the hour um, after the news and so forth. Um. I stumbled across Art Bell for the first time. Wow, I, I had just turned 14. It was like the fall of 1989. And of course, like I would do since I was, you know, probably seven or eight years old, I, I listened to AM radio at night or shortwave, which I have discussed in other talks that I have done concerning, you know, for instance, my number station show that I did talking about the number stations I would listen to on the shortwave. But on AM radio, I would, you know, tune and tune around and, Typically, I would listen to political talk at the time, you know, ever since I was old enough to remember remembering, you know, extremely liberal type of a guy and my views when I bought into the political illusion that there was a difference between the two parties. But that being said, sometimes the station here on the West Coast I would listen to, um, KGO out of San Francisco, would fade in and out, you know, heavily at night, and then sometimes it was down for repairs, and I'd tune around, and I remember... Um, you know, tuning the AM dial, and I came across the station that was close to the 810 dial, which KGO was on. It was 780 out of Reno, Nevada, and it had this new guy on there named Art Bell, and of course, Art Bell was talking about, you know, at the time, he hadn't really gotten extremely into the extraterrestrial topics like he, he ended up doing, but he would still talk about them. I can remember, you know, not too long after I heard him for the first time here in Bob Lazar on there, of course, and the story of, you know, his deal with Area 51. But I remember, you know, listening to Art and I'm like, man, who is this guy? What is he talking about? I mean, this is interesting. So I kept my ear on him, you know, and I would tune around and I'd find him every now and then. And um, sometime in the early 90s, I would start to listen to him a little bit more frequently, and I would hear him. Um, I heard such great guests on there, such as, you know, for the first time discussing the Anunnaki and the 12th planet. I heard Zachariah Sitchin on there, um, Father Mal Martin Malachi, who, if nobody's ever heard of Father Martin Malachi, I would, just for educational references, recommend go and you know check out some of art shows with him from back in the YouTube days. I know that he passed away before um, George Norrie took over the show in the early 2000s. But yeah, Father Mar Martin Malachi was very interesting. He was a former priest that um, had been let out of his vows by the Catholic Church and apparently he used to do exorcisms. But whether you believe it or not, it's just like like most of art shows, very much food for thought. Um, I heard such great people on there for the first time as the great Eric Von Doniken, author of Chariots of the Gods. Um, David Icke, of course, in the mid and mid, you know, later 90s, I would hear David Icke once in a while on there with some very profound things to say for the time. 
Um, Randolph Winters, of course, involved with the Billy Meyer case and the, the Pleiadian contacts and interesting guest, Linda Moulton Howe, um, so many people, David Wilcock for the first time, a young David Wilcock, so many people that Art had on. It was so innovative and legendary, you know, and I had my issues with Art. Sometimes I think his show was a little boring or, you know, of course, at the time, still stuck in the political illusion. I was more into that, but, you know, as I, as it came into the mid nineties and I, I remember graduating from high school and I, you know, I was still working late nights and I would get home and I would, you know, sometimes if the political talk was kind of boring, I would tune into Art's show on Coast to Coast. And man, this guy was a warrior though, I got to say, because like, okay, he ran the show out of his house in Arizona or wherever he lived at the time, you know, and back in those days he needed like, he had like six computers, like all these extensive wires to have phone lines and things coming into the house. It's nothing like it is now, but he would go off air sometimes for a few minutes, you know, mysteriously, then he'd come back on. And sometimes he wouldn't just run his scheduled show. I mean, you know, like coast to coast as we know of it now is, you know, out here on the West coast, it's 10 PM to 2 AM back East, 1 AM to 5 AM. And that's it, you know, and pretty structured, but art would run the show sometimes seven Six, seven, even a couple times, eight hours long, he just run the show. And whatever station back in those days in the pre-internet and very initial internet days were, these radio stations would carry that with the agreement that, you know, hey, if Art wanted to ramble on, you know, starting at, say, you know, 10 o'clock my time out here on the West Coast, if he wanted to ramble on past two, clear to three, four, five in the morning, you know, and have guests, they would let him have them on. And it was just, you know, I've got to pay homage to him because, you know, at times people have said, well, is Art Bell a disinformation agent? Is he working for the CIA, this or that? Well, I really think that, honestly, I've thought about this a lot over the years, and I'm not sure that it really matters because it just the intrigue that he has brought and just, you know, the innovation that he's brought, and it's really food for thought. And I think to get boxed up in thinking that, he's either some, you know, savior or a legend, or he's some disinformation agent is really too bad because really Art brought a lot of entertainment to the radio. You know, he would have such guests like the great J.C. Webster, which all those are chronicled on YouTube as well. You know, J.C. was some radical caller that would call in, some Christian fanatical, but, you know, then again, I always kind of thought maybe that that was Art's creation and Art either that was somebody that... Either Art did the voice for and created or somebody that, you know, Art set up to call in like that, but yet there'd be years go by between phone calls, so it was kind of like, eh, well, who knows. But that could speak to the creativity of Art Bell, and I know that, you know, he had to go off the air recently on his show, you know, The Midnight in the Desert, his new show that he's been doing for a few months after he tried to make a go of it a couple years ago on Sirius XM with Dark Matter, but... And then for contract reasons, and you know, you can get into those reasons on YouTube or find why that that show didn't work out, you know, pretty easily. But then, so he came back this past summer with um, Midnight in the Desert, and he recently was had to retire from air because his family was threatened. Now, he had mentioned this in shows previously leading up to this, and the thing about it is people need to realize is Art would... Um, whether it's true, whether it's not, it really doesn't matter. But Art would do these kind of things in yesteryear. I know in the late 90s, he had an issue with his son. He had to leave the air for. He had issues with, well, you know, his first wife, his first or second wife, um, the one before this, I can't remember. She passed on, had some issues there. And, you know, Art is just, it could be that just, Art's just a very private guy. It needs a space, you know, who knows, or it could be just part of the, part of the way that, you know, things work and it could be a little bit of a work. My, 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 um, tendency is to believe that most of it's probably true, but a little bit, little bit of it could be an exaggerated work just to get ratings. But one thing about Art Bell that really, that I really loved was his music. His bumper music was just incredible. I mean, I know he must have a little bit of Pleiadian in him somewhere for the creation of the bumper music that he would play. I mean, just amazing. And unfortunately, um, most of the YouTube 
recordings that are out there anymore of you know the few that are out art the art there out there with Art Bell doing Coast to Coast don't have in any of the commercials, which thankfully, but they don't have his bumper music um, listed either. And that song that I first played at the beginning, I know was one of his, you know, one of the ones that he really liked to play a lot. But there were so many of them, so many great late 60s, 70s, um, even in the 80s and, you know, a couple here in their early 90s songs that he would play. And it would just, it would just strike me like, you know, I'd heard them in a former lifetime or in a parallel reality or on another planet before. Um, songs that I had already, al you know, that I already myself liked and really tuned into and zoned into. And then sure enough, Art would play them, you know, songs that I would he had heard since I was, you know, two, three years old and new. It, it was just amazing. And, you know, Art... Um, like I said, he left Coast to Coast several times throughout the years. Sometimes would come back as a part-time host. I'm not sure quite how him and George Norrie got on, but that's their thing, you know. We both learn, we go, you know, we all learn and we grow from each other. And I just think that Art's contribution, whether you agree with him or not, whether he bores you or excites you, or no matter what you think of the gentleman, he really was an innovator. And no matter how he came about that, whether that was his own ingenuity or whether, frankly, whether, you know, he was put into that position by the cabal to do such a job, you know, who knows? We can speculate and get hung up on all that, but it, it just, it can never be mistaken, the contribution that he had. And I'll just never forget myself stumbling across him in 89 as a 14-year-old young man and then hearing him through the years here and there, um, his... Earlier years, he'd rant politically. I know that, you know, I was a really big Bill Clinton supporter when I was 17 and 92 or so. And then I would hear Art once in a while, you know, turn on him. And the one political thing Art would go off on was Art didn't at the time really like Bill Clinton. He thought Bill Clinton was evil. And I just thought, whatever, you know, yada, yada. You know, I wouldn't listen to Art to get my political opinions. But, you know, sometimes he'd have a good guest on, like a Bob Lazar. Or some, so it was very cutting edge. You know, like I said, you know, you can go down the laundry list of people he had on, whether you like them or not, you know, from Bob Lazar to David Icke to David Wilcock to Randolph Winters to Zachariah Sitchin to Eric Von Donneken, um, Linda Moulton Howe, endless Jacques Vallée, Barbara Han Clow. I mean, just endless, you know, the great guests that he brought to the radio. And, you know, I wish things would have worked out a little bit better with Coast in the end, but who knows, you know, there's always, it's a long life and lots of opportunities. I'd like to see Coast bring him back as a, if Art would agree to it, as a weekend host for Coast to Coast, you know. Um, him, him and George Norrie, I'm sure, could coexist. They might even be friends behind the scenes, you never know. Sometimes that's how these things work. It's amazing how Coast still plays most of his bumper music and, you know, some of the intros, like the theme to Midnight Express, the movie, and of course, the Some Velvet Morning by um, Nancy Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood that I just played. But Art, um, yeah, I hope we haven't heard the last from Art. He's interesting to listen to once in a while. You know, um, he really seems to be, whether he plays it off a little bit like he's not, and he really completely is. He seems to be really in tune with the pulse of the people, but yet he can play it off like he's just kind of that all golly G shucks he really doesn't know. So, you know, either Art's a really extremely humble man or, you know, maybe there's some agenda to what he's done, but, you know, it's really hard to say. All I can do is wish him and his family, you know, a great 2016, and I hope everything works out and I hope if there is somebody that is threatening his family's life, I hope this coward is taken care of. And, you know, and if not, you know, I'd like to see Art back on the radio for a little while longer. I know that, you know, he's been at this a long time. Shoot, he was up there in years when he got into the business. So, you know, much love to you, Art, and your family. Brother, you've been a big influence, and I'll never forget the music that you both reminded me of and turned me on to all these years. And, well, brother, some velvet morning when I'm straight. I hope one day we'll be able to have a chat. This is Rockin' Larry Lockin'. I'm out.